Good morning and welcome to The Nation. Failed Auckland mayoral candidate John Polino left the country on Friday ahead of allegations that he was at the centre of a plot to discredit Mayor Len Brown and force him to resign. Mr Polino has persistently denied any involvement in the publication of Mr Brown's extramarital affair with Bevan Schwang. And now there are new allegations, though, that he was the architect of the plot. Bevan Schwang has made a statement to the nation saying she met with John Polino in a car park at Mission Bay on the night of the election, where John Polino said he needed her to go public with the affair before the end of the week. The idea was for Cam, that is Cameron Slater, to threaten Len Brown and ask him to step down and Brown could use the excuse that he had a heart problem. Polino also promised her a job if he became mayor. Now, remember, John Polino and his campaign team, which includes Cameron Slater's father, John, have denied all knowledge of the affair before it was revealed by Cameron Slater on Wednesday. In Cameron Slater's story, Bevan Schwang claimed to have received threatening texts, but her own text conversations revealed to us do not show this. We'll put all this to Cameron Slater in just a moment, but first, here's Torben Akel with more. When the nation interviewed John Polino back in July at his campaign offices on Auckland's Ponsonby Road, standing in the wings throughout our interview was a young man named Luigi Waluigi, a South African of Italian heritage seen here in the States in 2009 on this YouTube video, speaking as the branch president of a youth-focused non-government organisation. JCI Metro strives to increase awareness of how businesses can operate in a socially responsible manner and have a positive impact on the community at the same time as producing a profit. Polino said Waluigi was part of his campaign team and Waluigi briefly outlined his experience in publicity and that had been in New Zealand for about the past two years. Here he is in Christchurch just before Christmas 2011, representing that same non-government organisation. By then, we now know Auckland Mayor Len Brown was having an affair with Bevan Schwang. And soon after, as we know from Waluigi's own Facebook photos, he was moving in similar circles. Here he is with Len Brown himself and National MP Cam Calder at the Pacifica Festival in March 2012. Indeed, Waluigi's Facebook photos are a veritable who's who of New Zealand politics. Here he is with John Key in April 2012, and then again a few months later. There's also the Governor-General, the American Ambassador, Labor's David Shearer and Kiwi Blog's David Farrar, and various National Party MPs. And in there too is Bevan Schwang, first appearing in June 2012 accompanied by this prophetic caption from Waluigi. Remember the name, he says, Bevan Schwang, one of the most driven people I've ever met. Indeed. By then, Brown's affair with Schwang was about a year old and they'd already been busted in the act by a security guard at the Auckland Town Hall. Just a few weeks earlier, too, at an event for young Chinese, the nation filmed this exclusive footage of the illicit couple singing together on stage. understands that by then Schwang was telling friends of Len Brown's interest in her. She spoke on camera to the nation around then too about being a young Chinese person in New Zealand. Being a Chinese migrant people confuse us with the, the variety of a Chinese migrant. You know um, I'm from Hong Kong and so um, New Zealand is actually very similar to Hong Kong in terms of the structure because we were both British colony and when people say oh you're from you know you're Chinese they obviously assume that you don't speak English you're from mainland China and you've got all sort of um, they put all sort of labels on you as to what a Chinese should look like and um, when I tell them that I actually don't have a Chinese passport I've actually had a British and a New Zealand passport they're really shocked. Would you call yourself uh, Kiwi or Chinese? I call myself a 1.5 Hong Kong Chinese New Zealander. So I, um, I'm a mix of both. I can't be one or the other. And sometimes I can understand why some people are anti-Chinese and vice versa. So I, I, love the, I love the fact that I'm in both worlds. A few months later, she was speaking at a prestigious event at the town hall, attended by Waluigi and, yes, Len Brown too. 
But around that time, according to Schwang's version of events on whale oil, she started seeing someone else and the affair with the mayor ended. And according to her statements to the Herald by then, she and Waweji were an intimate couple. However, their relationship only lasted a few months. Fast forward to May of this year when Polino announced he was standing for mayor. Exactly when Waweji started working on Polino's campaign isn't clear, though it was certainly by the time we filmed this on July the 8th. According to Shuang on Whale Oil, she and Brown only ever had sex once this year, and it was in July, the month after Shuang and Waweji had rekindled their relationship, according to texts between them, obtained by the nation. Those texts include the following. On August 28th, Waweji saying that if she got an incriminating text from Brown, someone called John, presumably either Polino or campaign chair John Slater, would give him every weekend off until the election. On September the 8th, her telling him she was returning a voice recorder to him, which he'd earlier asked her to record Brown with. And a fortnight later, her agreement to talk with Whale Oil's Cameron Slater and Stephen Cook. With a follow-up from her that Waweji didn't know how much she got out of her relationship with the mayor and that he has spoiled it. And just last Monday, two days after the election and her alleged conversation with Polino at his election party, when she still hadn't signed an affidavit for whale oil, her complaint that she needs work and money, things which Waweji replies she won't need after tomorrow when this explosive story broke.